close-up is brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. So here we are in the middle of tough economic times. There's not enough money to go around, yet we're shelling out $2.5 billion a year on preventable smoking-related diseases. So no surprises then that the, uh, the smokers were hit hard in the budget yesterday, and it's set to continue too. By 2016, a packet of the cigarettes will cost $20. But will hiking the price make smokers quit or simply drive some of them to get their nicotine fix another way? Michael Holland with the dairy owner in Hamilton who reckons while the cigarettes bring in business, they can also bring trouble, and it's something he fears will only get worse. It could be any dairy anywhere in the country. This one, the new 13-hour-a-day business of Harry Singh and his family. And this, an unwelcome after-hours customer who knows exactly what he wants. Straight to the cigarettes? Straight to the cigarettes, yeah. Here he is, just come in and he's got a long bar, core bar in his hand, he's fully masked, and he just goes straight behind the counter. And the burglar alarm's screaming, but he seems so casual. Exactly, it just seems so casual to me and I, it's just, I just can't believe how he's not worried about anything. The intruder taking a leisurely nine minutes to load up his booty, primarily cigarettes. $8,000 worth of cigarettes? Yeah. When I look at it, I just get angry a bit as well. It's just my shop and I just don't like how he's just taking my stuff away. The padlock on the main display cabinet doing its job. But Broke in another cupboard, the burglar here, finds his tobacco they, yeah. fix. And you see a thick padlock over it, and then he go below, the cabinet below it, and he just broke the door, ripped the bro uh, door off. So he's just, he's just down he's, in here? He's just down over here now, and uh, he just pushed the counter back now, so, so he can just sit down on his knees and fill up his rubbish bag. The 5am burglary coming less than three months after Harry first opened his doors for business, initially choosing not to stock cigarettes because of their appeal to burglars. From your point of view, cigarettes are the number one target? Yeah, this is the number one target definitely because uh, that's where they know cigarettes are expensive and they, they, that's how they can make profit. And I think they may be stealing it and selling it to underage people as well. They're going to sell it for cheaper and may, they're going to make some money out of it or something and... Uh... Making money, also the motivation behind Harry going against his better judgement and deciding after a month of low turnovers to sell cigarettes. What you're saying is cigarettes are vital to the survival of this business? Yes. C according to customers, what we're getting, what kind of customers we're getting, it is vital for us to have it. So, yeah. No cigarettes, no profit? There's no cigarettes there, you will not make any profit. Yes. There's going to be no sale. Within weeks, Harry says his turnover has increased fourfold, yeah, with smokers did. making their purchase and then spending on other items. But with the increased sales comes the increased risk. As the price goes up, the risk to dairy owners becomes greater. Yeah, it is definitely getting greater risk for us as the price goes up. And this is here, you can see up to seven to eight thousand dollar stock sitting here at the moment. Just in that cabinet? Yes. And right here is eight hundred odd dollars worth of cigarettes? Yes. Caught between trying to satisfy his customers and at the same time not entice burglars, this non-smoking dairy owner sees the only solution being what the government ultimately wants, a smoke-free country, rather than incremental price rises to make cigarettes less attractive. For them to just ban them totally, and uh, just uh, instead of doing it 20, 40 and 60, increasing slowly, slowly, and uh, because of the respect for the owners. It's just almost like his shop, he's just roaming around after this and just uh, picking it up what he wants. Well, we'll put um, Harry Singh's concerns to Associate Health Minister Tariana Turia shortly, but first, how do smokers view the latest move to force them to quit? Well, I asked social commentator Jim Hopkins, who also happens to be a long-time smoker, uh, how many a day he gets through? I, I'm actually down to... On days when I have to write columns, it's about eight, because I find that smoking does actually stimulate my thought processes. On days when I'm not writing columns, I'm sitting on five or six. And, I, and that's somebody who used to smoke 20 or 25 or 30 a day, depending on their stress levels and anxieties and tensions. Why don't you just have the willpower to just cut it off like that? What's the matter with you? <laughs> 
Well, hang on. Do you drink wine? Of course I do. Every, well, every sensible person drinks wine. Stop. Why don't you have the Why don't you have the willpower to stop? Because Michael? I don't. Why don't you have the willpower to stop driving? Because it because it's what? not bad for you. Because it's not <laughs> killing me, Jim. Yes, it it's is. It's killing you. It's killing you. Michael, I'm going to be killed by something. I mean, I was I was going to be killed the moment I was born. If Mrs. Turrier again is serious and Honey Harrowera alongside her and all the other lemon lip tutting wowsers who want to actually stamp out a simple pleasure that a working man is, is entitled to enjoy, and which, may I remind you, the government used to encourage by providing every soldier who wore the king's uniform and took the king's shilling a ration of tobacco every day. Seriously. No, but my simple point is... If they are serious about eliminating problems, they would actually tattoo a little message on the forehead of every newborn baby, assuming there's not a midwife in the room. They would tattoo a message on the forehead of every newborn baby, government health warning, birth causes death. D but Plain and simple fact of the matter is everything is risky. Yes, it is. But having said that, there's the cost of the health care, there's the cost... I mean, you're probably along at the doctor every second week wheezing because you're crook as a dog. Excuse me. Ex I haven't been to a doctor for 20 years. I don't go to doctors. I don't hold with them. They're ungodly. Listen, seriously, there's been a study done, I think in Czechoslovakia or somewhere, by a reputable international agency that actually demonstrated that allowing people to smoke and taxing them for the privilege of doing so was actually an economic benefit. If you think about it, smokers don't die because they smoke. They just die a bit earlier than they would have if they hadn't smoked. But they work for most of their lives and pay their taxes, and then they pop their clogs largely before or just after they've started collecting superannuation. So it may well be that those who don't smoke should thank those who do. The, because the net effect is that smokers are pr providing more to the health system than they are drawing down from it. I Abs would argue. Of course you would. I submit. You follow the logic? Anyway, legislation to raise the price of tobacco was introduced to uh, Parliament late this afternoon by the Associate Health Minister, Tariana Turia, who, by the way, wants smoking completely outlawed. Gone. So I spoke with her before she um, headed into the House to read the bill and asked whether she put any weight behind the theory that putting up tobacco prices will actually lead to black marketing and increased theft. Well, there isn't any real evidence, and it is the tobacco co company's propaganda Really, they're the ones saying that this is what's going to happen. But, of course, we do already have people who um, are committing burglaries, who are taking cigarettes and other uh, things from dairies right now. So it's not uh, going to be the price of tobacco that's going to force them to be committing burglaries. Although the higher the price, the more difficult it gets, and if they can't quit, they're going to try, aren't they? Or at least some will. Well, well, I suppose one could go down that track and, and say that. But I feel pretty confident that people generally are saying to me that while they are smokers, and there's been some research that's been carried out just recently where 70% of Māori smokers and 74% of Pacific smokers are saying that they would love to give up. They're just so addicted that it's very difficult. What about this 10%? How disappointed are you? Well, I'm not disappointed because I think that any lowering of the uptake of smoking is something that we need to celebrate. Probably the concern that I have is that if we don't raise the price sufficiently, that getting to the 2025 goal may well be harder. Indeed. So how hard did you argue for more than 10%? I mean, is this a loss for you? Um, well, I suppose one could view anything as a loss. I try to be positive and think, well, anything that you gain when you're operating in Parliament is a plus. Um, I did ask for a 50% rise in the, in the um, price of cigarettes because I think that this is what we actually need right now is to be taking a very hard line because, look, we're talking about 13 people dying a day, Mike, 5,000 people a year. This is really about saving people's lives. That's what I want for my grandchildren, to be able to grow up in a country that is smoke-free. How much do you think this is cynical by the National Party? 10%... No, I mean, some people will give up. 10% is too much, so they'll give up. That's good. But 10% also brings in an awful lot of money for the government, a government that is desperate for money. How much is a cynical cash grab? Well, when you consider how much we actually spend on smoking-related diseases, we're talking uh, about $2 billion, $2.5 billion, just on smoking-related diseases alone. Uh, this, this substance actually creates more issues for the health sector than any other single substance. 
we've got to be doing this, Mike. It's very important that even though, yes, the government is going to bring in approximately $500 million over the four years, uh, the fact is we're paying $2 billion a year to treat people with smoking-related diseases. And you cannot get that message into Bill English's head that the cost is greater than the revenue in? Because it seems like a logical argument, doesn't it? Well, it feels like a logical argument to me, and uh, clearly we, we need to be discussing this matter more than probably what we are. But I'm very dedicated to this. I've seen many of my own relatives. Very few of my first cousins have lived to be over 50 years of age, all smokers, all dying young. I, I don't want that for the future, for their grandchildren or for mine.